how you doing econ students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now, let's talk about money. The money market graph is one of the five key graphs that you absolutely need to know if you're taking the AP macro exam. It shows you the supply and demand for money. Before we go much further, let's define what money is. The narrowest definition of money is called M1 money. Now, of course, this involves cash, which you normally think of money, but it also includes traveler's checks and checkable deposits. Checkable deposits is money in checking accounts, and it's considered money because it's used as a medium of exchange. The point is, money's not just the cash in your wallet, it's also money in checking accounts. Now, also remember that money is not the same as wealth. So if you say, oh, my buddy, he's got so much money, he's got three houses and 10 cars, that doesn't mean he has a lot of money. So assets like cars and houses and stocks and bonds are not actually money. The reason why is that these assets have very low liquidity. In other words, it takes time to convert them into cash. Whereas M1 money has very high liquidity because cash is already cash and money in checking accounts can be converted to cash really quickly. So now we can start building the graph. Up here we have interest rate and down here we have the quantity of money. Let's start with the demand for money. As you can see, it's downward sloping. Now there's only two reasons why people demand money. It's for transaction demand and asset demand. One reason why you need money in your pocket or money in your checking account is so you can go buy stuff. That's called transaction demand for money. The other reason why people demand money is because they prefer having a liquid asset as opposed to having some other asset like stocks, bonds, or real estate. So if the interest rate is really high, the opportunity cost of having money in your pocket and your checking account is very high and you do not want to hold a lot of money. That's why the coin demand is really low. However, when the interest rate falls, then it's not a big deal to have a bunch of money in your checking account or on your person, and so the quantity of demand increases. Like all curves, this curve can shift. For example, if there's an increase in price level, there'll be an increase in the demand for money because people need more money for transactions. Another shifter is income. If income increases, the demand for money would also increase. Another shifter might be a change in technology in the banking system. For example, the widespread use of credit cards has decreased the demand for money because people can use their credit card instead. Now let's look at the supply of money. Notice it's vertical. This is because it is completely unrelated to the interest rate. The money supply is set and controlled by a country's central bank. and the United States, that's the Federal Reserve. And that's it. There's no other curves. That's the graph. Unlike aggregate demand or the Phillips curve, this graph does not show a recession, inflation, or full employment. Instead, this graph is used to show the idea of monetary policy. This is when the Fed increases or decreases the money supply to affect the interest rate to speed up or slow down the economy. Remember, expansionary monetary policy is when the Fed increases the money supply. This will decrease interest rates, increase investment, and increase aggregate demand. Contractionary monetary policy is designed to fight inflation. This is when the Fed would decrease the money supply, this would increase the interest rates, decrease investment, and decrease aggregate demand. There are three shifters of the money supply. They are the reserve requirement, the discount rate, and open market operations. But to learn more about those, you gotta watch a different video. Don't forget to check out my review apps and all the other videos covering all the concepts of AP macroeconomics. Till next time.